Sycamore Gap. I was here a few months ago, late last year, with my wife Jackie and Isabel doing the Hadrian's Wall walk. It was a lot busier then. I mean, it's only half past seven. There's not a soul around. Very peaceful. The aim of this trip was to photograph star trails. I've been planning it for a couple of months now. But unfortunately, it's going to be a cloudy night according to the forecast. Camping at Herding Farm and parked at Steel Rig Car Park. It's strange seeing the tree. I've seen it in the film and I've seen countless photographs of it. Difficult, difficult to get something different from it because it, you can really only get it from this angle. I've seen photographs up shooting down using the wall as a leading line but it, it seems a bit awkward for me. Oh, yeah, the uh, as you can see clouds on the horizon. They weren't forecast. It was forecast high cloud, no low cloud. Changeable. But I'm hoping I might get bursts through. Burst because there are some lovely wispy clouds there. So I've got my camera set up on the bank because if you go further down you're shooting up and you don't right you don't get a really nice angle and I want to be horizontal looking straight across to the tree so I'm just about just about horizontal four by three panorama because the light as you can see if I change it it's nice and light there but as soon as I expose to the sky the ground goes into absolute shadow so it's a three shot HDR, 5.6. All I can hear is sheep and me. But it, it really is really well positioned. You've got the lovely dip in the valley. I will be doing a couple of panoramas. You can't get much, if you get any higher, just at the base of the tree, you can see in the background, the horizon of the hill behind it. So that kind of spoils it quite a bit. Nice and peaceful, absolutely no pressure on me today. Finally got my lens back. I was actually sat outside the, the locker near, Mor near my local Morrisons, waiting for the guy to arrive. I got it really fine. Yeah, I'm gonna do some lovely sweeping panoramas. I'm gonna put the tree in the middle and I'm gonna put the tree on the right and left hand sides. I'm cropped to my heart's consent, content. The main vlog's probably going to be tomorrow morning when I come for sunrise. Yeah, the cloud's not clearing. This is absolutely awesome. If you've never done the Hadrian's Wall walk, I would highly recommend it. It's not very photogenic, if I was to be perfectly honest. There's not an awful lot of opportunities to take photographs because it's quite flat and barren. And there's not as much of the wall as you would have thought. This is probably the only area where there's quite a lot of the wall. Yep, more clouds forming. I'm just gonna sit down and relax. I'm gonna check clear outdoors, clear outdoors, clear outside, to see what the sky's looking like tonight. If it's not looking too well, I'm gonna stay for a while, get back to my car, get back to the campsite, have a few pints, have something to eat because all I've had is half of last night's pizza. So for now, I'm going to relax. See you soon. ta -da.
Well, <coughs> well, I did not expect to be stood here. Now I'd seen this place before when I looked on Google Maps and I saw a beached boat, which I'll show you in a second. I thought, I'll have some of that. You've also got Peel Island, just over what you can call, call a, what you can call a causeway. And just beyond that is um, an island with a, a castle on it. Yes, I'm going to catch this, the water coming in for a time lapse and I'm going to do some long exposure black and white high contrasts because the sky is quite harsh because the sun is quite harsh. Yeah, let's, let's get on with it. This is proving to be one of the most difficult compositions I've ever had to expose for. The problem I've got is the sun is to that side of the boat and this side's in absolute shadow. If I expose for the boat to get a bit of detail, the sky is completely gone. I can't put a grad on. Well, I have got a point 0.9 soft grad on just to take the top section of the sky down but the problem I've got is, as you can see, the most bright, the brightest part of the sky is, is there. So when I expose to get detail in the boat, the sky is just gone. I've got the polarizer on, you all know why. I've got the 0.9 soft grab on, and I've got the Lee 10 stop on. I'm, I'm, exper I'm experimenting with, now I'm experimenting with exposure times, anything from 20 seconds to 60. I don't need a very long exposure because this, the sea itself is very calm and there's not an awful lot of movement in the sky. That sky over there is exceptionally bright, very strange. I thought when I arrived the tide was it is inmost. I love inventing words. It is uh, high tide. There you go. But it's coming a long way and I actually did a time lapse. I'll show you. I did a time lapse from further down there. However, I got distracted and as the tide came in, the legs of the tripod were in the sand. And every now and again in the time lapse, there's a judder. So I've had to start again. One of them days where it wasn't going too well yesterday, mainly because I didn't get the sky I was after. I love this hat. I didn't get the sky I was after. I was after long exposures and I was after star trails. And I thought, I've got this place myself, it's going to be gorgeous, but as I said, no sky. But this really has lifted my spirits. This is absolutely awesome. There's one similar, but larger in Scotland. Um, I'll pop a few of them on so you can see what it's like if you haven't been. And I'll pop coordinates to where it is. Easily accessible, there's a car park quite close. Bigger than this, it's got support holding it in place, but it's it's very characterful. Very characterful and it's got lovely long exposure potential or high dynamic and high contrast potential. I'm actually tempted to get down there, but as, I've, as the tide comes in, all a lot of the causeway is actually obviously vanishing. A moment ago, I could get in just, I could have got across just to around, around there, but as the tide's coming in, it's obviously cutting off a lot of the, a lot of the causeway. I'm gonna have an investigation Nonetheless, I'm tempted to get on the ferry to go across to Peel Island, Peel Island, but I'm not going to, so I've got to get back home. 
glorious day. Talk about pigs and troughs. These, this is what photography is about. Pigs and troughs. I'm on a high at the moment. I'm going to nip over to that part in a second because I've done some panoramas, long exposures. I was tempted to try the intentional camera movement that this chap's done. He's produced one in particular that's absolutely fantastic. What he does, he holds his camera and he'll just kind of jiggle it around and it's very much trailing as it would be. And he'll, he'll, he'll process them in such a way that they've got a very dreamy, ethereal, mysterious. Any other synonyms? That'll do feel about them. Um, I'll, I'll pop a link to his, to his website on because they really are very different to what I've seen before. The usual multi, the usual intent of the camera movements are zooming in or zooming left and right. Yeah, let's get across. Got my wellies on as well. I'll talk about packed, talk about, talk about prepared. The car is carnage. Anyway, guys, see you soon. So I've just finished photographing the boat or ship, whatever it's called, and a chap walked past. He said I photographed it recently when the fog was in and it appeared to be floating in the mist. He said, do you need to be aware that the boat is actually being scrapped? So I asked him when it would be gone. He said, I suspect within 12 months it will all have been scrapped and it will have been uh, taken away. A real shame, a real shame. So if you're after photographing said boat, you better get a shuffle on. It's going to be gone soon. Anyway, see ya. Well, that's me done for the day. Absolutely cracking weekend. I was laid in my tent last night. It started to get cold. Didn't sleep much, woke up this morning feeling a bit. Um, but finding this boat, finding this island, this glorious weather, not bad clouds, really has given me a boost. It really has. That and having my lens back. Glorious, absolutely glorious. I've put no pressure on myself today, this weekend at all. Some may say that's me bottling it, copping out, taking the easy way out. But I'm not a professional, I do this for fun. And then I've been pigs and troughs where I've thought, I've got to get out, I've got to get the shot. And I've put a lot of pressure on myself. And I see people doing it all the time. No more pressure. This is absolute fun. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm certainly not taking the easy way out compositionally and photographically. I work hard for my compositions. I work hard to find locations. And this is an absolute belter. I've taken a few photographs of the core of the, the breakwater probably more an apt uh, description leading out to the island over there but it just doesn't work you've got the small low-lying clouds that are just static so they just sit there when you're doing long exposures lovely fluffy clouds higher up but it's just not an interesting photograph so I packed that up I've done a, a panorama just to the left of the camera mainly because there are some glorious reflection because the, the water at that side is very calm the water on that, that side is a bit more choppy that and you've got a lovely bright orange sunken boat in the foreground it's horizontal so it's not the best but i've captured it anyway so from now it's cafe can of coke bite to eat get home have a look at my photographs one keeper one keeper that'll do me yeah let's go thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it if you've got any questions bang them down below if you want to meet up let me know I'll see if Lynn wants to come along as well there'll be a flood of people now glorious yeah glorious thanks for watching see you soon Ta -da. short sleeves floppy hat wonderful